Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast coming at you live. And today we're going to talk about a topic that I think stumps a lot of mortgage professionals and is the bane of existence for a lot of mortgage pros. And that's why most real estate agents don't make you their exclusive and most importantly, how to fix it. Why are they not giving you all their business? You provide great rates, great service. You do a bang up job. You're a good person. You're committed to providing phenomenal service to your clients. You actually care. So why not you? Why is it that you're making so many friends and not making real, solid, loyal, committed partnerships? Well, that's the question of the hour on today's episode. Why aren't you making those exclusive partnerships and how can you fix it? How can you turn the table and start attracting real, solid partnerships that last, that are profitable, that are fulfilling and that you actually enjoy working with the kind of people that actually give you life, give you energy, give you a sense of excitement for your business, people that you would actually count as friends and people that are exceedingly profitable to your business in terms of the clientele they're bringing to you and the respect and edification and endorsement you get from them. So the first question I have for you, is who should you be targeting? Who should you be wanting to cultivate an exclusive partnership with? Well, I'm glad you asked. I wanna really speak to the importance of being intentional around who you are intentionally attracting. Because if you'll take anyone with the pulse who can fog a mirror, guess what? You'll get exactly that. You will get whatever you enable. You will get whatever you accept. If you accept the bottom feeding whining, sibling, complaining, jelly donut eating realtors, the bottom feeders, the low producers, guess what you'll get? Exactly what you accept, what you will settle for. And so a big part of why a lot of mortgage professionals struggle is because number one, they don't know what they want. Number two, they'll settle for anything. They have very low standards. They will take anyone with pulse who can fog a mirror, who will send them anything. And they're not altogether selective, let alone are they willing to set standards for what they will accept. And that is the beginning of the end. That is death rattle to success, friends. Most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. So you want to start to attract top producing real estate agents who bring you all their business all the time, make you their exclusive. It starts with intending for it. It starts with you believing that you deserve it, that you're capable of it, that you deserve it, that you're worthy of it. Rarely in life will your results exceed that which you believe you're capable of and worthy of. If you don't believe you're capable of it, if you don't believe you're worthy of it, you will not have it. You will not accept it. You will repel it. You will settle for second best. You guys with me on that? So it starts with being intentional and having a presupposition that you can have it exactly the way you want it. That's one of the most potently powerful presuppositions you can ever live by. How's this for a novel concept? You can have it, my friend, exactly the way you want it, not anything less. You can have it exactly the way you want it. What would life be like if you could have it exactly the way you want it? What would life be like if you can have the partnerships exactly the way you want it, the deal flow exactly the way you want it, the clients exactly the way you want it? Now, does that mean everything's lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows all the time? Hell no. We're talking about real life on the front lines of capitalism. Of course, you're going to have setbacks. You're going to have challenges. You're going to have obstacles. You're going to have turbulence. But what if you lived inside of a presupposition that you presupposed every day that you can actually have it the way you want it. But Dorn, doesn't that set me up for disappointment? Doesn't that set me up to feel discouraged when things go wrong, when things go sideways? Not necessarily. What if in order for you to have it the way you want it, you're going to have to face trials and tribulations. You're going to have to face challenges. You're going to have to face setbacks. You're going to have to face problems. What if by you stepping up and living into this presupposition that you can have it exactly the way you want it, that by virtue of you signing up for stretching for that higher ground, that you're also stretching and saying yes to 
bigger problems, higher problems, higher obstacles, bigger challenges. And if that is indeed the case, what if the challenges are actually a good sign that you're onto something, that you're on the right track? Because this is exactly what you signed up for when you signed up for a bigger dream. You guys with me on that? So what if instead of it being like, oh no, life sucks because I've got a problem, it's like, perfect, this is exactly what I signed up for. I signed up to build a million dollar business that sets me free, and I signed up by virtue of setting a big dream, I also signed up for big obstacles and big challenges, and I'm willing to embrace that because I realize there's no free lunch in life. If I wanna stretch for big dreams, I also have to be willing to stretch myself and to become a, becoming a bigger person. That means I need to be able to tackle and overcome bigger, bigger challenges. I need to become a bigger leader, a bigger problem solver, a bigger business person that can handle bigger challenges so I can have a bigger business and a bigger life. You guys with me on that? So it's about seeing these challenges with new eyes and having a resourceful state and being able to see it with a perspective that allows you to feel powerful and poised and peaceful in the face of the challenges. So now with that perspective, who should you be partnering with? Do you settle for the bottom feeders, the whiners, the, sniveller, the snivelers, the bottom feeding, jelly donut eating, complaining real estate agents? I don't think so. As uh, Homie the Clown would say in, uh, in Living Color, bap, I don't think so. Homie don't play that, <laughs> right? You don't play that. You don't play just settling for second best. Screw that. You can have it exactly the way you want it. So if you can have it any way you want it, how would you have it? Would you have top producing real estate agents who own the lion's share of the market, who control the lion's share of the buyers, the lion's share of the inventory, who have the highest capacity to send you the most amount of business the most often, who can send you the most amount of referrals, the most amount of closed deals, the most amount of cash in your wallet? Hell yeah. Would you not? That's what you're going for, is it not? You'd rather go narrow, deep, and rich with just a few key top producers than going really wide and shallow and skimpy and broke with many. True? So why not have it and go for it the way you want it? So that's the first step, is understand you can have it any way you want it. And second step is understand that if you're not intentional about who you're going after, you'll settle for anything. If you don't stand for something, you'll settle for anything. You get what you settle for. So let's presuppose now we're going after the top dogs. We're going after the top achievers in your market who have the lion's share of the business. Now, how are we gonna attract them as partners? That's the question, right? Well, let's start off with just understanding what a real partnership is. What is a real partnership? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Well. I'm going to break down a few things. Maybe you can, if you're watching this live, you can hit me up with some shout outs, some comments on uh, the comment feed there and let me know what a real partnership means to you. What does a real partnership mean to you? Hit me up with some comments. Here are a few qualifications and attributes of a real partnership that I had in mind. A mutual win-win alliance. Notice the word mutual, mutual win-win. They win, you win. That's a solid partnership that can last with longevity. They make you their exclusive. They don't just let anybody take ownership and control of the single most part, important part of the process, the financing, on the single most important and significant financial decision most of these people are ever going to make in their entire life, buying a house. They're not going to just leave that to chance. Hell no. They're going to make sure that that transaction is governed by and guided by a true professional that they trust, that they know, like, and trust. Any top producer that is worth their salt understands the importance of that. So they're not going to just pass out three business cards. They're going to make sure the client is referred to a professional who will give them the advice, the counsel, and everything they need to tip the scales of fortune in their favor to ensure it's a stress-free, positive experience with the best result possible for the client. And when it's the best possible result for the client, guess what? It's also the best possible result for you and for the real estate agent. 
Some other things to think about when it comes to a solid partnership is that they're loyal to you. They're loyal to you and you alone. They don't just, you know, have a flavor of the week where they dish referrals to one LO this week and then another LO next week. No, that's not how a real partnership rolls. You align yourselves, you partner together, you have a win-win partnership where you're mutually winning and benefiting and flourishing and thriving, and you don't mess with passing referrals with anybody else. That's what a true marriage is. That's what a true partnership is. It's called loyalty. The other thing that you want to look for in a real partnership is that they don't ask the clients to get pre-approved through you. They tell the clients to get pre-approved through you. Well, isn't that steering door and isn't that against the law? Well, I mean, there might be some semantics there. The bottom line is if the realtor wants the best for the client and they want to protect that transaction to ensure that everyone has the best experience, they're not going to leave that to chance. They're not going to roll the dice and hope that the client has the best financing. They're going to want to make sure for the best interest of the client that they at least get a second look through you, that they at least get pre-approved through you. They don't have to choose you, but they at least get pre-approved through you. So they have the best chance of getting the best financing with the best rates and terms available. And then the client can choose whoever they want to work with. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, that's going to give the client the best chance of success. Agreed? So that's what a partnership looks like. They don't ask the client, they tell the client. The other thing that a real partnership looks like is it's it goes beyond just the business transaction. It goes beyond just a business relationship. It's the kind of person that you'd want to hang with uh, after work. Maybe, you know, go and have a bevy. Maybe go, maybe go out and have dinner with them. Maybe meet up with them and their spouse, you and your spouse, them and their spouse, and go out for dinner, have a glass of wine, laugh, connect, learn about each other as people. There's a mutual respect, a mutual honor, a mutual appreciation, because it goes deeper than just the business. It's someone you know, like, trust, and there's a part of you that really loves who this person is. You love their character. You love their heart. You love how they show up in the world. You love how they take care of their spouse and how they take care of their kids and how they take care of their clients and what they stand for as a person. Wouldn't you agree? That's like that's the kind of partnership you really want to have. Isn't that true? Someone you, you actually enjoy working with, someone that inspires you, someone you respect, someone you appreciate, maybe even go as far as to say someone you adore. You adore this person for who they are as a person. And wouldn't you agree that you would want them to feel the same way about you? True? So we're going to circle back to that in a moment. But notice the feeling. Notice the vibration, the feeling as you start to really step into what it feels like to have that kind of synergy, that kind of alliance. Doesn't it feel amazing? I'm getting excited just thinking about it, right? It's wholesome. It's healthy. It's fun. It's invigorating. It, it's exciting. And that's the way a real partnership should feel. So notice the qualities, the attributes, the characteristics. I encourage you to write those down. And you might have some other attributes. You might have some other characteristics. Add to my list, subtract from my list, make it your own. You don't get what you want until you know what you want. So get clarity on what the target is. Because if, any, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. You're just meandering in the dark. And as Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you so far, right? <laughs> Chances are not great. So why aren't top producing real estate agents giving you all their business and making you their exclusive? Why aren't you cultivating those kind of partnerships like I just described? Well, the first and obvious one is you're not showing up like a top producer. If you want to attract a top producer, you got to become that which you desire to attract. If you're dating and you want to attract a 10, you got to become a 10. Water always seeks its own level. If you want to attract a 10, you got to become a 10. If you want to attract someone who's got a healthy and fit body, you got to be knowing you need to become the person who has a healthy and fit body and has a healthy lifestyle such that you would cultivate a healthy and fit body. True? Why would it? 
10 out of 10 who has a healthy and fit body and want to attract and settle for a frump who's got a big belly, who's lazy, who's sitting around, you know, watching TV, eating Cheetos. <laughs> That's not going to fly, is it? So you've got to become who you want to attract. That's the first principle. And if you're not doing that, that's a big reason why you're not attracting the top producers, why you're not attracting the 10 out of 10s. The other big reason is because you don't have a compelling, unique value proposition. You might be doing the smiling and dialing. You might be doing the militant Mondays. You know, there's some coaching companies out there getting you to do the, the, the uh, militant Mondays. I'm not going to mention any names, but you know who I'm talking about, who will get you doing it the hard way, grinding it out, making outbound cold calls, just throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks. And you notice that they don't give you the time of day. Why not? Because you do not have a compelling, unique value proposition that makes them stop in the tracks, stand to attention, and actually want to meet with you, let alone do business with you. If you don't have that unique value proposition, well, go figure. You might as well just waste four hours of your day, two hours of your day every Monday, whatever amount of time you're wasting there, just throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks. You're doing it the hard way, friends. If you want to attract, you got to be attractive. You got to have a, an attractive value proposition that's unique, that's compelling, that makes you stand out from the clutter, that makes you stand out from the pack, that makes you stand out from all the other Joe Schmo LOs who are smiling down on the same real estate agents on the same day with the same boring ass pitch. You guys with me on this? If you don't want to waste your time doing it the hard way, you've got to start working smart instead of just working hard. The other reason why they're not giving me the time of day is because you lack confidence. You call them up and you're like, you know, maybe my name is John Smith from ABC Mortgage. And, you know, um, I was thinking, you know, I know you probably have other uh, LOs that maybe you work with. But, uh, you know, if if there's anything that you can't get done or they can't done, I don't mean to step on any toes or anything, but. You know, I provide great rates and great service, and uh, I'd be happy to help if there's anything I can help you with. I mean, if you have any deals that aren't, aren't getting closed, you know, I'm happy to be a backup. And I'd love to talk to you more about your business and how I can help you. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe we can find uh, uh, some kind of opportunity to work together. Who the hell in the right mind is going to say yes to that, right? Screw that. No one's going to, in the right mind, who's a top producer, is going to want to waste their time with voluntary infliction, with that kind of a lame ass value proposition. You got to show up powerful. You got to show up confident, not arrogant, but confident. Arrogance is knowing why you're good, but not knowing why you're good. Confidence is knowing you're good and knowing why you're good because you got something kick ass, unique, compelling, significant that makes impact, that makes value that no one else is offering. You don't have arrogance, you have confidence. So you got to know that you know that you know that no one else is even getting close to what you bring to the table. When you own that, man, you've got your shoulders back, you've got your chin up, you've got your cup full, and you understand that they need you more than you need them. How's that for flipping the script? They need you more than you need them. That's what I'm talking about. You got the cookie. You guys with me? So you've got, that's a big reason why you're not attracting these people. Is you you kind of got your shoulders slumped in and you're kind of like, man, here I go again, more grinding on militant Mondays and you got the same boring ass pitch and then you're deflated and dejected and depressed because it ain't working because they're not giving you the time of day because they don't want to hear it because they heard the same thing from a bazillion other LOs yesterday, today and the day before that. And so, again, all of those are factors. All of those are symptom of, symptoms of doing it the hard way. So you got to own your confidence. You got to own that you know that you know that you know that you got the best thing in town, baby. No one else even gets close. And if they say no, they just disqualify themselves. Next, some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting. It's that kind of posture, that kind of mindset. The other reason why they're not giving you the time of day is because you lack the follow through. You under, you over promise and under deliver. So you might be people pleasing on the front end and your people displeasing on the back end because you're making big promises you can't deliver on. And that has you lose confidence. It has you lose self-respect. And at the end of the day, it has you lose partners and lose business and lose your reputation. And that'll cost you with clients. It'll cost you with realtors. So you need to be able to not just over promise, but over deliver. You've got to be able to follow through. Talk is cheap. Everyone talks a big game, 
Anyone can talk a big game, but it takes a real champion to walk a big game, right? You got to show up like a champion and walk the big game, not just talk it. Talk is cheap. Everyone wants to be a champion. Very few people are willing to do what it takes to become a champion. You got to be willing to do what it takes to become a champion if you want to attract champions. Simple as that. And the last piece of the puzzle that I think is a big missing link that a lot of people are held back by and are stifled by and are struggling as a result of is they lack a proven plan. They don't know that they don't know that they don't know. And so they're just winging it in the dark. They're taking shots in the dark. They're trying to reinvent the wheel, doing it the hard way, flying by the seat of their pants, just winging it. And then they wonder why it doesn't work. So if you, this is one of the secret sauce strategies to success, friends. This is what helped me go from just making peanuts, you know, just eking out a meager existence to building a seven figure thriving business. If there's one thing that's the ultimate secret sauce to accelerating learning curves, condensing timeframes and turning decades into days, this is it, my friends. This is it. Model other people's success formulas. Model other people's success recipes. Find out what other people have found to be effective that works time and time again. And instead of you floundering around just spinning your wheels, banging your head against the wall, doing it the hard way, trying to reinvent the wheel, you just lock in on their proven plan. It's the fastest way to get to where you want to be without messing around. And so if you guys have been digging what I've been laying down today and you'd like to learn more about how to get straight to the result, shortest path to the cash, lowest hanging fruit, get straight to what works and stop messing around with what doesn't work, I encourage you guys to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call with myself or one of my certified consultants. On the call, what you're gonna have an opportunity to do is to dive into your business and to look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at, where you wanna be. And if we can help you get there, by all means, we will show you how. And if not, we will be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, you're gonna leave this call with massive value and massive clarity. So this is an opportunity to really identify what's holding you back and to learn a rock solid, battle tested, proven plan to get you from where you are to where you wanna be without messing around doing it the hard way. Just boom, straight to the outcome. Straight to the outcome without floundering around, treading water, spinning your wheels. So again, if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, check it out. We don't like to work with people who aren't ambitious. So if you're just looking for an itty bitty little uptick in results, do not book a call. You can do that yourself doing it the hard way. The people that this is for are people who are ambitious. They wanna add at least $100,000 plus per year to their annual income. Residential mortgage loan officers, mortgage brokers, mortgage agents, who want to create a quantum leap breakthrough in their income, working smarter, not harder. If that's you, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, so there you go. I've just given you the reasons why real estate agents don't give you the time of day and why you're not forging exclusive partnerships and how you can start to do that. So again, if you wanna learn more about our secret sauce to help you make that happen, with a battle tested proven plan, go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. This is Doran Aldana from mortgagemarketingcoach.com from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Again, go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action, and chances are you'll get massive results. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening.